Dear students, we have learned enough about HTML and we will be doing further experiments on HTML in upcoming modules. However, our today's topic is XML that is similar to HTML tags, however with certain differences which we will be discussing in this module. So basically XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. This is much like HTML and it was originally designed to store data to represent and code certain kind of data of real world and it is self descriptive so let's have an example so for example we want to uh, write a note from person tov to jenny and it's a reminder that do not forget me this weekend so this message we want to store in a way that it is being understood by all humans and even by the machines very easily. So we have started it with a tag note. So you can see that in HTML there were certain specific tags. However, in XML the author invent the tags based on his or her requirement. So he has started with note that I am basically writing a note and it is from two Tov from Jenny and then we have used another tag heading that has a content reminder and there is a body so that says that don't forget me this weekend. So this is basically a code and XML does not do anything based on this code. So if you put all of this code in, in a web browser, so web browser will not be understanding as it was understanding the HTML tags. So this means that you need to write some other software part which will understand this code and will translate it into an output like this which we have on the right side. So such a software need to be written that is reading XML tags and data from XML tags and then printing it in this way. So basically if we uh, compare XML and HTML we can say that XML is designed to carry data, HTML was designed to display data and then XML tags are not predefined as HTML you can choose tags as per your convenience and requirement and author will define tags rather author will invent their tags whatever they like. So there is another example which we want to show you that we want to uh, store the data of a bookstore and that for example library or bookstore has book categories, title, author, year and price all of such information need to be coded, stored in a file. So one option would be of course to write all of these things in a Microsoft Word or in a notepad. However, if you write these things into properly managed XML document that could be understood by others as well and even by the machines very efficiently. So let's see the example. So we have bookstore and that bookstore has book tag with a category children and then for example there is another category web. So in uh, book tag category we have title, author, year and price and this is ending of one record of a book and then there is another record of another book that has certain other elements. However, you can see that when you read this XML, this code, so then you are very easily understanding that this information is representing some books and those have certain elements as title, author, year and price. And the web agents, for example, some web, web services would 
feel it very easy to process this data. So for example, they I don't want to identify all of the titles of the books. So they will write a code that whatever you find between the title start tag and title end tag, get this information and put it wherever they want in a database or in, a, in another file. So it is very easy and convenient. And here title, author, year, and price have text contents because they contain text. And bookstore and book have element contents because they contain elements. And book has attribute as category, web, and children. Here is another example. So you do not need to uh, understand this example. I just have put this example to give you and show you that what is actually the power of XML that even you can store such a music recording information into such a XML file which can be understood by the humans and even by the machines to produce the same recording on other end. So XML benefits are it simplifies data, it simplifies data transport and it simplifies platform changes and simplifies data availability. So if we summarize today's module, we have learned about XML, how it is being used to store data, and then we have seen multiple examples, and we have seen that why we need XML and what are the benefits of XML.